I got a request for this on Instagram maybe a month ago, maybe even two. But it's a topic I've been waiting to discuss. So the questions in this video today are, how should you use your name after you get married? Should you ask, adopt your married name after you get married? Should you hyphenate it? Should you um, use a space? Should you just not use it at all? Um, does it have to be on your Jamaican passport? How should you sign? And several other questions. So share this video with a friend, grab a cup of tea, and let's go. So the first question is, when you get married, do you have to take your husband's last name? This is actually a personal question. You have to decide if you'd like to take your husband's last name when you get married. Usually it's between you and him. But in my case, you know, I decided whether or not I wanted to take the name and I did. So I took it. Now, I got married in New York and that was like 2008. When I went to get my license at the Bronx County Court, the, the licensing application asked what my new surname would be. There are some states that the application form does not say this and the marriage certificate is pretty much the same as the licensing form. But you have to decide how you want to use your name after you get married. Do you want to keep your father's name and not adopt your husband's name or you want to adopt your husband's name and have a double barrel last name or drop your father's name and just take your husband's name? I knew from early on that I was not going to drop my father's name because fathers are always worried that they, when they have daughters, their daughters will give up the family name. And my father is Rastafarian, so the family name is everything. So I knew I was never going to drop my father's name. It just so happened that my husband's name was also my mother's name. So now I have both of my parents' names. But that aside, I decided I would take my husband's name and hyphenate it. Hyphen is that little dash that looks like a minus sign. So I added that between Green and Williams. So my name became Green Williams. I have never used my name any other way since that day. In 2008, I had gone to Jamaica and I had gotten myself a new passport and I put that name on it. Green Williams, nothing else. On my school certificate, Green Williams. On my car, Green Williams. And never do I write my name without the hyphen. I never feel so tired to drop in the hyphen. I never feel tired enough to drop off the Williams. It is Green Williams anywhere you see my name written. Now, you could just put a space between the name. You don't have to use a hyphen because the hyphen has implications. I didn't know this when I was getting married. But the hyphen means the new name, the Green Williams, is now the family name. And even the kids will have that name. I didn't know that. Um, I learned that later on, but that's fine. I've been using this name forever and it's not a problem. Now, once you have decided what the name will be now that you're married, should you put it on your passport? The Jamaican government has no stipulations that you must. However, you have to make this decision based on all the other documents that you have in this married name. When you got married, it is likely that before you even got married, you got a joint bank account. It is possible that you filed your green card or your lawyer filed your green card with the married name, the double barrel name or the hyphenated name, or if you did not take your husband's name, the single last name. You will be traveling with a green card and a passport at all times until you become a U.S. citizen or a citizen of whichever other country you're in. You have to make sure that you won't have any issues traveling when you're showing two different names on your documents. The government does not stipulate that you must put the married name on, but you have to consider what it will affect. Now, persons will say to me, well, I have property in Jamaica in this name and I want to keep it in this name. That's fine. Just understand that there may be consequences when you travel. When you decide to get married, perhaps not take the husband's name if you want to keep the passport in your birth name. Problem arise when you put your driver's license in the last name of your husband, but not put on your father's name part. So say for instance, my name is Green Williams, not for instance, my name is Green Williams. I apply for my driver's license in Williams, not Green Williams. My name is Green Williams. I never use any other name. So my driver's license will not have Williams. My bank account will not have Williams. That is Williams. It will have Green Williams at all times. So many persons drop off the Green, drop off the Williams, all willy-nilly whenever they feel like it. You cannot do that. This is your name now. And when someone sees the name on an application form or they're asked their name, they think the person is speaking of their father's name. 
unless the person says, what is your maiden name? They're asking the name you took when you got married. So if someone asked me my name, I would say Green Williams. If they say, what is your maiden name or your birth name? I would say Green. I would never say my name is Gail Williams. That is not my name. This is going to be a difficult part to understand. I chose the name Green Williams, and that is a name I will continue to use. You cannot drop off the green when you feel like it and only use Williams. I'm stressing this because I have seen this so many times. Now, you can't drop off the green and use Williams. You can't drop off the Williams and use green. It is green Williams. The next thing now is persons do not know how to sign when they take on a married name. This is something you have to think about. When I decided to get married, I signed my name, you know, some flashy G-R-E-E-W-I-L-L-I-M-S. But after that day, I did not want to sign like that. So I officially made my signature like a G and a G and a W with a little thing at the end that represents the green. And that is my name. That is my signature. You have to decide how you're signing now with this new married name. The weird thing is the Jamaican government will accept your signature if I signed it as G Green or if I sign it as G Williams. I don't like that because that is confusing. Someone the other day, one of my clients, tried to sign the passport in her birth name only, even though she added on her husband's name. So said her name was Smith Riley. She, she wrote out her name like Angela Smith, and that was her signature. And I said, but if you're writing out the name rather than, you know, some squiggly fancy stuff, you know, some fancy cursive, if you're going to spell the name out like that and you are married and the reason you're getting this passport is because you're married, why not add the married part of the name. She had not thought about it at all. She's young, they're a young couple. And so she's like, oh yeah, you are right. Why would my signature not represent both of the names? Something like that. You don't have to, but when you write the name all out, it looks very weird. Um, so you have to decide what your signature is going to be from the day you get married. And I need to make another video about signature because this is a big issue. Now, the Jamaican passport has a section in it called May whatever. So if you have a passport before 2023 and you were married, in your passport you will see May something. And my name in my passport would say Gail Green Williams, May Green. May, as I've said in several videos, means formerly or previously known as or called whatever. So it's telling me or telling anyone who looks at my passport that my birth name was Green. The current Jamaican passport, as of 2023, does not say May. And this is where the huge problem is arising. The May in, its, in itself is an issue because many persons did not know that May was not a part of their name. And I am not joking because I have shown this on the other platform. Persons do not know that May is not a part of their name. It's even worse when they dropped their birth name and they took their husband's name. So for instance, they got married and they said, I want to be called Gail Williams. I do not want to take my, my, keep my father's name. But they have Gail Williams, May Green. They think because it says May Green, they are still green. When they go to agencies in the U.S. who are not familiar with this terminology, because in the U.S. they don't say surname, they don't say maiden name, they say birth name, and they say last name. So May is a British concept, and of course we use the British English. So the U.S. does not know what May means, you know, agencies where you would go to. I showed an envelope the other day for a lady who actually wrote her name as May. It was on the envelope that came to her house. I was shocked. She said when she went to the bank, the bank saw it in the passport and asked her why it was there. Nobody had a presence of mind to Google the word May to see what it means. So they put May on her bank account. I kid you not. And so when they wrote to her, you know, they've been writing to her for years. It has May, the maiden name on it. Many persons now apply for their passport and I always ask, what will your new name be? And would you believe me that everybody leave out their middle name? Or what is your name going to be in the passport? Nobody gives me their middle name. They just give me their first name and their last name. 
And I have to say to them, so you want the passport to be exactly as it is now. But the problem with that is, if you thought May was a part of your name, then when you get the new passport and see that Jamaica no longer use May, you are not going to have that maiden name that you have been putting on your everything from day one. You dropped your, husband, your father's name. So the May was only representing an old name, not a current name. But people who dropped their father's name and took their husband's name were still leaning on the name that came after the May. Anything after the May is not your legal name anymore. It just means yeah, that you use the name. You know, name son no more, you can't use the name legally. Not that the passport is not coming back with May. All the people who were clutching on to the May, whatever the maiden name was, are finding their passport without the married name. One lady got her passport and gave me the shock of her life because she says, why is my married name in it? I'm like, sweetie, you said this is a name you want back in the passport because I let my clients write out to me what they want their name to be. So I have it in writing. I said, here it is. I asked you what you wanted and you said you wanted it exactly as it was in the passport. She says, how did my married name get in there? I'm like, you've had it for 10 years. I can't tell you how. I really don't know how you could have it for 10 years and not know. But the biggest problem is now that there's no name and people drop their birth name, the passport no longer has their birth name in it. And everybody's shocked because before they came to the U.S., they bought land in their maiden name. They had a car in Jamaica in their maiden name. They have bank accounts in Jamaica in their maiden name because my bank of my money market broker's account was in my birth name. But when I went to Jamaica, I got my new passport and I went in and I changed that. But a lot of people have not done that. You have to change your name and your address on your important documents right away, especially if money is involved. Because if anything should happen to you, people can't present a document to collect that money because it's not the same name. <laughs> That's another one I see a lot. I've seen every problem. So when you go to collect the money, you have nothing to show because the name that you are leaning on is no longer in the passport. Now, this video is very long and it's repetitive. But I've seen so many scenarios where persons did not understand what I was saying because one of my clients could not understand that I was telling her that any way the name is in the passport right now, that's how it's going to be. But because the maiden name was in there, she thought that was her legal name and it would come back. It's not coming back with your maiden name um, after the name anymore. So if you had dropped your husband's name when you got married, then it's not going to be in the passport. She did not want it that way, but her son, I had to call her son and say, could you please explain to her because I've explained it, but I want you to tell her what to do because I'm not going to tell her if she should apply for a new passport and change the name or what she should do because the difference between a name change in your passport and no name change is about three months. And everybody want the one that's faster with no name change, but that's not good for everybody. So her husband, her son explained it to her and they decided they would go with exactly as it is in the passport. And then later on, if they so desire, they go ahead and get a replacement passport. Now, this video is getting very, very long, but let me add on this part since this channel allows you to talk as long as you like. So you got married and now you're divorced and you're about to drop your husband's name and go back to your birth name, but your passport has more than a year left on it. What do you do? If your passport has more than a year left on it, it is a replacement, not a renewal. So if for whatever reason you got the passport back and you did not realize that that was how the name was going to be and you go to the bank and they're like, hey, where's the other part of your name that used to be in the passport? We can't give you this money because you gave us this name and now you're showing us something different. Now you want to change the passport. If you have more than a year left on that passport, it is a replacement and not a renewal. The government allows you to change your passport every nine years. You get it for 10 years, but you can replace it a year. You can renew it a year sooner because, you know, because of travel restrictions um, requiring you to have six months, which is another video that I have to make. Um, if you're going to do it in less than um, nine years, you're going to have to do a replacement. And this process takes three months or more when you live overseas, pretty much in any of the countries overseas, because this is how long all the concerts and embassies take and high commissions take. Likewise, if you got married, your passport was issued five years ago, so you still have five years left. You cannot renew it. You have to do a replacement. 
A replacement is similar to the process of a lost, stolen, or damaged passport. Or if you happen to run out of visa pages, well, they don't stamp it anymore, so nobody run out anymore. <laughs> um, but you can't renew it with more than a year left on it. Likewise, if you want to renew early, especially for my B1, B2 visas, work visa people, which I get a lot, if you would like to renew your passport because you have to renew your visa before six months is left on it, then you may, as long as you have 11 months and 29 days. Exactly one day less than an entire year. Now, I have said a lot. I have sometimes lost my chain of thought. So when you watch this video, if I have not answered anything for you, please leave a comment or just message me on WhatsApp. My phone number can be found pretty much anywhere. People always say, how do I contact you? My phone number is everywhere. Some platforms don't allow you to put your phone number because I did it on the other one, the Tok Tok one. I put it there and they blocked my video. And then they wrote me and told me that I could not send messages for like three months. So right now I can't send messages until September because I put my phone number on a flyer and I had an emoji finger pointing at it because somebody asked, how do I contact you? Another time I said something in the comments like something, maybe I gave up my website or something or my email and they blocked me before that. I barely just got back messaging capabilities and they blocked me again. So you will barely find me there. If you go there, you'll see some stale videos. Most of my videos are on the purple and pink one because they are loving on me right now. I know this red and white one is about to be my new favorite because I can talk for as long as I like and I have had so much to say like I have so much content like I, I write them down in my phone like make a video about this a video about this so I have so much of that so anyway I hope I have answered all of the questions leave um, any question you have and I can answer it I am Gail of 876 documents um, check us out 876documents.com email 876docs at gmail.com and on every platform it's at 876documents. We help Jamaicans with passports, birth certificates, driver's license, TRM, driving abstract and we assist with citizenship for non-Jamaicans. So hit us up. All right, um, whew, I'm all talked out. I thank you for watching. Oh.